Let's spend a little more time on question four. It's asking for uh, um, the uh, asking for uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm some <laughs> hesitating between different terminology. Um, <laughs> so you could call this a vector wave function. Uh, the one I kind of want you to call it, but we haven't used in this class so far, is a spinner. Spinner is the more specific term for the mathematical object we are dealing with. <laughs> but let's call it vector. So find the vector which satisfies this particular relationship. So um, I think I, is, this is not the same. Um, I, yeah, I don't think this is the exact the same thing I was doing. In. So this is a simple enough of an operator that we can kind of guess and check. So let me do that. Um, I think of many of you uh, derived the result already, probably. Um, but I kind of need, um, when you did that, did you get this as your result? No? I'm not getting another. OK, so it, it's probably something different. I don't know. I just came up with that one um, just on the spot. So I wasn't, this wasn't meant to be this. Um, so if it didn't turn out to be that, then great. Uh, that we avoided an accident. So um, for question four, what we were tasked to do is we had this particular equation. So. Um, Let's just give it some labels. The spin up in the x direction, which will have a component um, A and B. And these are potentially complex numbers. Um, maybe, maybe not. And um, what these A and B need to satisfy is this equation. The uh, multiplication by the, the x um, spin operator h bar over 2, 0, 1, 1, 0 is equal to, and oh, I gave you the, oh wait, not equal to, that multiplied by this vector is equal to the scalar that we suspect is one of the eigenvalues or one of the possible measurements by the operator times I want the same. Um, I want the um, same uh, vector back. So let's uh, simplify some things already. Um, so h bar over two cancels out, cancels out. Can get rid of that. And there is a systematic way to do it. The systematic way to do it would be to um, kind of write out the, your system of equations. Because what this represents is a system of two equations. Because when you write it out, you you know this times this gives you the first row. This times this gives you your second row. So you maybe I should do it that way. Wait. So when you do that, yeah. So the result you get is a equals b, right? That's what you need for this to be satisfied. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, so uh, that accident I was afraid of happened. So if A is equal to B, then what your vector has to be is this. Um, so it's, uh, instead of AB, it's AA. A vector of this form would satisfy that. Or you could even write it as you know, A times 1, 1. And I, I, see, I think I, um, I'm now realizing what happened. So I was asking you guys if you got the result for this as this. And um, let me ask you this. If this A and B, if they were like what you had in that vector, 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, is this equation still satisfied? It is, right? Yes. So what meaning does the value of A have? It has no physical meaning. This A here, this is what we have been calling normalization, normalization coefficient. You've heard this mentioned in the wave mechanics context, right? 
So um, you also have normalization coefficient in the matrix mechanics. And this is, here is uh, something kind of you see new in quantum mechanics. The kind of vectors we use in quantum mechanics, you know, these vectors, their magnitudes have no, or their amplitude, their size has no physical meaning. Um, so, so, so the reason this was written this way, this is a normalized vector. So when you calculate this, it's uh, automatically already expectation value. If I gave you a, a vector that's not normalized, like this one, then you'd have to divide this by the dot product of the vector with itself so that the end result would be normalized. Okay. Yeah, so um, good. So what this answer for question four, what that's revealing is that this state here, what this is, this is x spin up state. As in, this represents a spin state which is post point pointing in positive x direction. Then it sort of, does that make intuitive sense? That if you had, um, so you know, if you had a spin up or spin down and you measure the expectation value, then you would measure spin up or spin down. But if you had a spin, like pointing in the x direction, and you measure the average value of spin up and spin down, then this has on average zero spin up or spin down. Right? Yeah, so that makes intuitive sense, right? Yeah, so all right, so far here, so far so good. Um, and you know, I gave you only one question because we have limited time in lab. But if you want to do uh, more exercises for your own benefit, then what you can do is, well, you could find one that satisfies minus h bar over 2. What would it look like if you are looking to, looking to find the uh, spin down, um, uh, x spin down state? Like, you can do that on your own. Oh, and you can also do it for sy, and you can also do it for sy. Spin, both the spin up and spin down, it's like spin going in this direction and spin going in this direction. Um, so I, you know, I'll leave that for you. And what you will find that all of those states will be a linear combination of these two. They are, so all those, uh, uh, for y direction, it'll be complex because of this. But they will all be linear combination of these two. So um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it.